Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk about the science of longevity and the secret to staying healthy and aging gracefully. Let's first define the bifurcation between lifespan and health span. Lifespan is very easy for people to understand. It's binary. You're either alive or you're not alive. And clearly part of longevity is about how long you live. And for a lot of people, that tends to be where the discussion ends. This is because longevity somehow just implies having a long lifespan, living as long as possible, 100 plus years or something to that extent. We talk about maximum lifespan, but there's an equally, if not slightly more important component of longevity, which is health span. And health span, I think, requires some definition. The medical definition of health span is the period of time which you are free from disability and disease. But that doesn't seem to be very helpful because by that definition, your health span has stayed the same for the last 20 or 30 years if you've been in reasonable health. There's no way to quantify the difference. So then what really is health span? Health span refers to the quality of one's life at any given point. Your physical form, mental acuity, cognitive function, physical performance, mental health, and your energy levels. Basically, the overall state of your body and mind at any given point. It's the idea to die young, but as late as possible. So the way to really think about health span is along these three dimensions, physical, cognitive, and emotional. And therefore, anything that really becomes a question of longevity has to address all these three issues, lifespan, mental, and physical health. So with all that in mind, what are the major exit points for people along the lifespan route to start with? Apart from the obvious element of being alive or dead, there are primarily four major lifestyle metabolic disorders that cause aging and eventually lead to death. Hi, I'm Rishi and thanks for stopping by my channel. I'm a practicing nutritionist with a background in human physiology and nutritional sciences. I take a holistic and scientific approach to all aspects of health and wellness. I practice functional medicine and use food and lifestyle interventions to manipulate hormones in order to optimize one's nutrition, promote longevity and healthy aging. So if you want to hack your health span and be the best version of yourself, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything. So of these four major metabolic lifestyle disorders I speak of, there seems to be one common dysfunction that links all four of them. And this one common dysfunction seems to have a major root cause. Try and visualize this. One major dysfunction is the main trunk of the tree, while the other four metabolic disorders are the branches that arise from that main tree trunk. Then imagine further that this tree trunk has a root, which is the root cause for this common dysfunction and all four metabolic disorders. The root cause is chronic low-grade systemic inflammation and metabolic dysfunction in terms of malfunctioning mitochondria. The mitochondria are the powerhouses of your cell responsible for energy production. When this energy production is inefficient and causes uncontrolled oxidative stress, that is when they are malfunctioning and cause metabolic disorders. The main common dysfunction or the tree trunk is insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is almost common to any of the four metabolic disorders I'm going to speak of. These four disorders are type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular dysfunction, cancer, and neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. Which of these four metabolic disorders manifest for any given person depends on two main factors. One, your genetic predisposition and family history, and two, your epigenetics, or how your nutrition and lifestyle affect and trigger different genes in your body, turning them on or off. Now, it's almost impossible to control the genetic element, but it's entirely possible to control the epigenetic element. Despite the growing body of evidence leading epigenetics to disease, much is still unknown about the mechanisms underlying these changes. It is clear, however, that both genetics and epigenetics play an important role in the development of diseases, and that better understanding of these mechanisms could lead to new approaches to disease prevention and treatment. This is the entire realm of functional medicine. But one thing is abundantly clear. The food you eat, the lifestyle you lead, and the amount of exercise you get together reduce your mortality risk by a multifold factor of 3 to 5x. And I really don't want to get into the political debate of which diet is best for you. Whether you should be plant or animal based, low carb or low fat, 
whether you should follow a clean or flexible dieting approach, it doesn't matter. The main thing you need to consider about food, apart from everything around what you're eating, is mainly how much you're consuming and not over consuming on a regular basis. How close you are to eating single ingredient whole foods and how many processed and ultra processed foods you're consuming. And are you able to maintain or eat in a deficit sustainably while getting your necessary micronutrients from it? Are you able to keep your main biomarkers in check like fasted insulin and fasted glucose levels, your hemoglobin A1c or your cholesterol levels like LDL and your triglycerides? Are these all in the normal range? These should be your main and primary concern when choosing your diet. If you're starting to improve performance, strength or endurance in the gym, or can't seem to break past those plateaus, but you think you're doing everything right with your workouts, then get in touch with me on Instagram at Rishi Raj Dhingra or directly on my website, rishidhingra.com to understand the missing link with your nutrition. There's also a bunch of other valuable content on there to get you started on your health and fitness journey. Thank you for watching this video.